Today's MMA Fight Picks podcast is brought to you by Hero Soap Company. Hero Soap is an all-natural soap with no harsh chemicals and are made with essential oils. This means no lab-made synthetic properties that can irritate sensitive skin. This is why you won't find cotton candy or bubblegum scented products, just real Great smelling soap. Best of all, Hero Soap is USA veteran owned and a percentage of the proceeds from your purchase go directly to veterans and first responders. Hero Soap is packaged in a water and dust proof receivable bag that will repel the harsh elements so you can take it with you hiking, camping, wherever. Each bar of soap is handmade in Phoenix, Arizona. Every ingredient used to make Hero Soap is sourced from companies right here in the USA. Unlike other lifeless natural soaps, there are tons of great smelling soaps to choose from. Cedarwood with charcoal, relaxing lavender, and my favorite, peppermint plus cool. And fellas, it's so good, it'll make your balls tingle. Simply go to HeroSoapCompany.com forward slash discount forward slash MMAFP for 10% off your purchase. Or just enter promo code MMAFP. FP at checkout if you don't want to type all that in. You can even subscribe and save even more money. Remember, promo code MMAFP for 10% off your purchase. You'll smell great without irritating chemicals, and you'll be giving back to USA veterans and first responders. You're listening to the One Man Show Network. Welcome to the MMA Fight Picks Podcast with your host, Aaron Weinbaum. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the MMA Fight Picks Podcast. I am your host, Aaron Weinbaum. We are exclusively on Periscope tonight. Uh, you'll be able to catch the replays on YouTube and, and all that jazz later on. Uh, you can go to AaronSaysWhat.com, click on the MMA Fight Picks tab, and uh, subscribe however you would like to subscribe there and of course, if you are on Periscope, please uh, set your notifications to where uh, when I come on, you can interact because we're going to pick some fights tonight. <laughs> and I got to tell you, I am super, super excited for this one. Justin Gaethje, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Finally, we're going to get a true lightweight champion. Uh, although I'm not really into the hype that. Justin is the interim champ because, you know, Khabib couldn't leave the country uh, to defend against uh, Ferguson. So it is what it is, man. It's, uh, I don't know. It's it's just one of those things, man. And, it, yeah, I don't know. So anyway, we're going to get to this here. I see I have lots of look and lose here. This is interactive, so you can tag me on Twitter, uh, send me a message, whatever. And you can totally... Help me pick some fights. Leave a comment however you want. Periscope, you're all watching. It's cool, but that's the last time I'm going to ask. So, first up, Casey Kenny, Nathaniel Wood. So, Casey Kenny just fought, and what a great fight. Holly Holm card there. Um, mm, 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 mm. So, it was a unanimous decision. I don't understand here. I mean, I, I know he's still on Fight Island, but taking a fight like... That quickly, I realize it is a catch weight at 140 pounds, but I, I worry about that, you know. He, but he's got he's got wins. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna butcher this guy's name. Alatang, Lewis Smolka did lose to Marab, but a whole lot of wins. A bright future for this kid. And let's take a look at Nathaniel here. He hasn't fought since July this year. He's had some rest. Uh, just beat John Castaneda. Loses by TKO to John Dotson. Uh, that's back in February. Uh, Quinones, Andre Uel, Johnny Eduardo. Man, that's a blast from the past. But I don't like the fact, even though he doesn't have to cut as much weight, that Casey Kenny just fought. And, you know, it's different. It wasn't like a quick knockout. It was a three-round war. So... I'm going to go with Nathaniel Wood here. I'm sorry. So, smiling Sam Alvey, friend of the podcast, uh, way back when, against Da Yoon Jung. So, Sam Alvey, I, he's not smiling so much these days. I, I'd like to see him get his smile back. I really would. And let's take a look here. All of a sudden, he's got four losses in a row. You know, that Ryan Spann loss was a split decision. 
uh, lost against Kitson Abru, got TKO by Jimmy Crute, I, and then TKO'd right before that uh, by Little Nog, uh, Antonio Rogero Nogueira, but I think that that was kind of suspect, and he was kind of mad there. Uh, so he hasn't won since June 2018, all right? Let's take a look at Dayung Jung. So, like I said, I've been ragging on these guys that are coming into the UFC kind of from these other organizations. Now, he does have two UFC wins. Mike Rodriguez, Kadis uh, Abragamov. So, here's the bad thing. He's fought a bunch of guys I've never heard, or heard of, but he's winning. You know, he hasn't fought in almost a year. He hasn't fought since December. So, it's hard for me to pick, but I, I want to go with just – this is tough, man. Tough, tough, tough. But I'm going to go with the guy in the win streak here, uh, Da Yung Jong. Kind of strange. But, yeah, it is what it is. All right, Cowboy Alex Alvera against Shavkat Rachmanov. I think I got that right, and I don't know if I'll ever get it right again. Another non-UFC guy. Never been in the UFC, but nothing but wins, okay? And this is short notice for him. I don't remember quite exactly who dropped out of the Cowboy fight, so feel free to tag that in. Um, But Cowboy, all of a sudden, two wins in a row here. Both decisions. Peter Sabata, Max Griffin, before that, losses to Nicholas Dobley, Mike Perry, Gunnar Nelson, Gunnar. Um, but... Oh man, how do you how do you listen? Ha huh. ha. Where's this guy from? I, I I gotta know. So let's see. Oh, Kazakhstan. Yeah, you know I'm gonna go with the guy who's not been in the UFC because these guys have been killing it. There's no crowd, and and that's what that's what's been doing it for these non UFC guys. There's no jitters because there's no crowd, so it's kind of an even playing field. You know, Alex Oliveira. Dealt with the crowd. Uh, but I'm going to go uh, Shafkat Rachmanov. Uh, here's a fight. Stefan Struve, tie to Avasa. Please, the good thing, there is no crowd, so I don't have to see a shoey. Please, God, I don't want to see a shoey. Ever. I, I can't think of anything grosser. I could, but I'm not going to say it. I can't think of anything grosser, but... <clears throat> Yuck. Yuck, 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 yuck. Um, but, Stefan Struve, okay. I don't know how many times he got kicked in the nuts uh, with, in the Rothwell fight, but he should have just said, I can't continue. And, and then he still got TKO'd. All right, the, you're, you're, he's probably trying to head kick him and kicked him in the nuts. The guy's so tall. So, he ended up losing TKO. Beats uh, Marcos Rogero de Lima. Before that, a bunch of losses dating back to 2018. Tai Tuivasa. I thought he was cut from the UFC. Help me out here if he hasn't been. Um, but yeah. Three losses. Uh, hasn't fought in over a year. Sergey Spivak, uh, Blago Ivanov, Junior DeSantos. Huh. Finished twice out of those three losses. You know, one's an arm trial choke and then TKO'd by DeSantos. Does have wins over like Andre Olosky, uh Cyril Asker. Rashad Coulter. Um, mm, I don't know. Oh, Thanos with a comment here says, I won big with Lopez. I owe him a 4-1. to one. Good for you, brother. Good for you. But I don't know, man. I don't think Ty Tuovas is that good. I'm, I'm just going to say it. Um, you know, he does have that win over Andre Alosky, but Alosky's kind of streaky these days anyways. I'm going to go Stefan Struve. If he doesn't win this fight, I don't know what his future is. And I, I don't know that I want to see him continue, honestly. I don't know what he can do. So, yeah. All right. Alexander Volkov. Walt Harris. How can you not root for Walt Harris after what happened to his uh, stepdaughter a while back? You know, a horrible, horrible thing. Just lost to Alistair Overeem. I didn't like that matchup. You know, everyone wanted the comeback story. But there's levels to this game. You know, Walt Harris... You saw how he folded against Verdun with the jiu-jitsu. You know, Overeem 
pretty much schooled him as well. He was just better everywhere. You know, but he does have wins over Alexi Olenek, Sergey Spivak, and then, of course, the, uh, I know, oh, he tested positive for something, so against Ovlosky, so that's not really a win, so, okay. And then Alexander Volkov. Just lost to Curtis Blades. It was a decision. I mean, that was a tough fight. You know, Volkov, not a grappler, man. And uh, he did hold his own. He handled him. Um, he does have that win over Greg Hardy. Lost. Oh, that crazy loss against Derek Lewis. We thought Derek Lewis was just done. And then like 11 seconds left to go. Boink. Yeah. So very, very interesting there. Um, but lots and lots of wins for Volkov, you know. Oh, I forgot he KO'd Verdum, he KO'd Struve. Um, it's been a while, though, but I think there's levels of this game, and I don't know that Walt Harris can quite stand with uh, Alexander Volkov, and I I root for the guy. I really do, and we'll see where his training has been since the uh, Overeem fight back in May. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I As much as I would like, Walt Harris to have a win here and, and have something good happen for him. I'm, I'm going to go uh, Volkov. God dang, this next one's a good one. Robert Whitaker, Jared Cannoneer. Damn, damn, damn. This could be a main event anywhere. Um, Let's take a look, though. Robert Whitaker just beat Darren Till. Great fight. Um, Yeah, got KO'd. Israel Adesanya. Before that, man... Hadn't lost since back when he was welterweight. But look at these wins, man. Yoel twice. And he shouldn't have fought them both times. Oh. I know he missed weight for sure once. Yeah, that last fight. I thought he missed weight twice. TKO's Jacare Souza. Derek Brunson. Uh, Rafael Notal beats him. Beats Uriah Hall. Breach Bad Taveras by knockout. Insane. That this guy is being counted out. And then you got Jared Cannonier. Fought all the way up from heavyweight. Now he's at middleweight. Doing great at middleweight. I don't know that he's lost at middleweight. No. So David Branch, Anderson Silva, Jack Hermanson so far. And, you know, lost to the top two guys in the light heavyweight division. Dominic Reyes and John Vlockowitz. You know, he made it all the way to a decision with Jan. Didn't do so good against Dominic. Got knocked out in the first round. Um, oh, he even fought Glover Teixeira. You know, I like the level of fighters, you know, obviously that both men have faced, but at that upper echelon, it's very, very hard for me to pick against Robert Whitaker. And that, you know, that was a good way to get his groove back when a very hard fight with Darren Till. But I've got, got to say, Robert Whitaker here. I think the experience takes it. Here you go. Oh, man. The main event of the evening. Justin Gaethje, Habib Nurmagomedov. How do I pick this fight? He made, Justin Gaethje just made Tony Ferguson look human. And, you know, you've not seen that. You know, you, you've seen him kind of get backed up, knocked down, a little wobbly. But Tony Ferguson always comes back and, and, and gets it somehow in, in some sort of fashion. But Gaethje, you know, I'm going to tell you what it is, too. With Gaethje and, and, and Ferguson. Ferguson did that thing where he cut weight. Now, Chael Sonnen said, no, I don't agree with that. All wrestlers cut weight. Well, that's fine. Wrestlers do cut weight all the time. But it's apples to apples. Gaethje didn't cut weight for no reason. So, Ferguson did. And then he did it again two weeks later. What does that do to your body? You know? Gaethje didn't do it. Gaethje rested. Gaethje did what he was supposed to. He continued training. Cut weight when he was supposed to cut weight. Came back and beat Ferguson. So there you go there. But, you know, on the other hand, you got a killer. You know, he is amazing. And I also look at Habib here. And, uh, of course, I don't have pulled up right now, of course. Habib, never lost. Ever. This is going to be number 29, okay? I, I And... Somehow 30 is going to be a big fight if he gets past Justin Gaethje. And it's very real that Justin Gaethje could do something here. But this is the same type of hype Conor McGregor got. Everything, oh, Conor's got him. Conor can land that punch. Conor can do this. Conor can do that. Well, guess what? 
Habib's training. Habib's training big time. He's training striking, obviously. You know, he knocked Connor down. He did fine in the striking realm with him. Look what he did. Beats Dustin Poirier rear naked choke. Neck crank Connor McGregor. Ally Quinta. You know, it's a decision. Al gave him probably his toughest fight. Edson Barboza, decision. Michael Johnson, submission. Daryl Horcher, okay, never mind. <laughs> RDA, decision. Way back when, back in 2014. No way I'm picking up against a 29 and 0 guy. Are you insane right now? Don't even think for a moment that I think that Habib's going to win. No, 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 no. So I am going. Habib, I hope number 30 is Tony Ferguson or GSP or something fantastic. But I don't see him lose. So that's it. Those are my picks. Have a great time watching the fights this week. And until next time, if there's nothing else, shalom. Please remember to support the podcast by visiting the affiliate links on AaronSaysWhat.com.